right? All the important area here, like your back pocket or your gluteal muscles. Right? So starting from the top, you've got the piriformis here. So it comes from the anterolateral sacrum to the greater trochanter. So if you want, you can draw that on the little sheets. And it's also going to be part of the stabilization of the pelvis. And in some cases, also, it can be considered an AV ductor. But again, if it comes from the top and it's going into the greater trochanter, it's going to do this, right? It's going to do AV ductor. So now, Gamellus, or if you, if you follow like the zodiac, right? Gemini, right? That's twins. So Gemellus is twins, so there's two of them. That's why there's two G's. Okay. So there's a glomellus superior and a glomellus inferior. It's going to be this one. They're all the same. Okay. There's going to be the obturators in between there too. And the quadratus laborum down here. So they're all right in this area here. There's a picture of it in the book too. Quadratus laborum? Quadratus femorum, I'm sorry. So here's another picture of it here. So you have mm -hmm. piriformis, you have superior and inferior glomus, you have obturator internus and externus, and then quadratus femoris. So they're all a bunch of little muscles that are all tight right in next to each other. But from top to bottom, this is the way it breaks down. Piriformis, the superior and inferior glomus, and then the two obturators, you have the internus and the externus, and then I guess femoris. So the difference will be between the um, femoris? Uh, let's let's apply. Yeah, so this would be about this obturator is, remember we talked about this is the obturator, this little opening in here, okay, the one that comes on the, you have the obturator foramen and then it's covered with a layer of fascia. The one that comes from the inside is obturator in internus and it's coming from here and going around this way and then the externus comes from the outer side of that obturator foramen. So you have the obturator foramen like this in the pelvis. This is the internal side, right? It's more towards the center. So obturator internus comes off of that and it comes, it works its way around. Obturator externus comes from the other side of that fascia and then it also comes over here because they're both external rotators. They all come to this greater trochanter area. Right? So the PGOGOQ, that's the one what? They're direction all is that? small, what, what's that? What direction is that? What is that supposed to help us with? This is from superior to inferior, the way that the muscles are in here, okay? So piriformis is the most superior one. When you come right down from that, you have the superior gamellus. Then right there, you have the in obturator internus, and it's coming around from the inside of that obturator frame, and it's coming back and going around like that. Whereas, then you have the uh, obturator so we have the inferior glomerulus comes next, which just falls in that layer here. Then you have the obturator externus, and that's coming in here, and that came from the other side of the obturator framing. Came on to the side of that pole facing the outside. So it comes around that way. And then down at the bottom here, you have the biggest one, which is the quadrant source. So that's just a way of memorizing them from top to bottom. And they're all the, the six deep lateral so you have piriformis, gamellus superior, obturator, internus inferior, obturator externus, and then quadratus femoris. Okay. So the only one that comes up with that piriformis as far as clinically, but these are the muscles and that's what we're going to learn. And if you ask me, is that going to come up again that much anymore? Not so much. Piriformis? Yes. Do you still need to know these? Unfortunately, yes. Could, could you um, specify 
from the pubic side or the ischium side, which where the uh, the obturator internals um, and external. It's going to kind of involve both of them because okay. the pubis. It's it's not so much. It's really more that it comes from that fascia that covers that foramen. Okay. It's not so much the actual bone itself, although it could come from the perimeter of the bone, but it would involve both of them because this obturator, again, involves the pubic bone and mm -hmm. the issue. Okay. Okay, so if you ask me if it's one or the other, I'd say both. Okay. But the idea is that it comes from the, you have the, the frame and kind of sits, the two of them sit like this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if it's coming off of this side, it would be internal. Okay. And then if it's coming off of this side, it's external. Okay, there's a lot of things when you get into the perineum and stuff. You have obturator nerves and, and all kinds of other things. And we're not necessarily really going to get into that. And then as far as the you know pal other palpation things is you need to find the pubic symphysis and the pubic ramus things. So obviously, if you know if you're palpating that on yourself, that's fine. If you're palpating it on somebody else, what typically the best thing to do is to say, I'm going to use your hand to palpate. Okay, if you're sensitive enough with your fingers, you can feel through the other first hand. Okay, it may not come up that much that you're going to need to palpate the pubic bone. Okay, but you know if you're doing points and you're palpating down in that area, you're going to need to find the different locations of the pubic ramus. Right? So you don't want to want to use their hands to go through. It, okay. So if you're, <coughs> so then we get down to the quadratus femoris, so that's going to be coming off the initial tuberosity, and then the greater trochia. So what you have to learn to do is you, you kind of need to know the basis of the skeleton so that when you're looking at a patient, you can, buy, so you don't have to go buy those x-ray goggles right out of the comic books. You have to have that in your brain. So that when you look and you look at the anatomy, that you know where the iliac crest is going to be, you know where the ischial tuberosity is going to be, you know where the greater trochanter. I mean, those are things you can palpate from the surface. But things that are more deep, you need to know in your head by, by being familiar with what the skeleton looks like to know what's in there. Because right? the best way to palpate something is to know what you're palpating, rather than just going around and poking and saying, you know, what's this here? <laughs> Your hands need to be educated to know where they're going and what you're looking for. Right? So the more that you can understand it, the easier it is to palpate. Because if you don't want to just be the blind, you know, poking around and saying what's what's in there, you want to know, okay, I know what's there. I know that's the issue tuberosity. I know here's the adductor tubercle. I know here's the head of the fibula. Okay. And also to find out different shaped people. Because <clears throat> your patients are not going to be one shape. Right. Yeah, you, but you, they still have the same, I mean, there are some variations, but yeah, you need to kind of three-dimensionally know how one thing's going to relate to the other. You know, it's kind of like you can sort of triangulate between the PSIS and the issue tuberosity and the tip, tip of the sacrum of the coccyx. But if you only try it on bony people, then you get a huge person. Yeah. yeah. Right. But you still need to visual visually know that it's just because, like I say, you know, I've, I've got a, 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 a washboard stomach under here, I just got more laundry on top. So you have to be able to palpate through the laundry and know what's underneath it. Right? So everybody has a pelvis underneath, it's just more things around it. Alright, so we've pretty much gone through all the different muscles.